This Thanksgiving marks a major milestone for an Oklahoma man, one very near and dear to one of KFOR's own. News 4's Jacqueline Chapel's father sitting around the Thanksgiving table with his family, celebrating a moment we weren't sure would ever come, his first holiday with a new heart. A gift the chapels will never be able to repay. News 4's Jacqueline Chapel shares the story of her dad, Jack. A moment we weren't sure would ever come. My dad, Jack Chapel, leaving the hospital for the first time in over four months. Do you actually feel like you've been given a second chance at life? I think it's happened three times. Dad still working on his recovery after receiving the gift of life, a heart transplant over the summer. But this journey is one he began years earlier. Dad first learning he had congestive heart failure in 2013. His diagnosis taking a turn two years later, starting with the death of my grandfather Andy, my dad's dad, losing his own life to heart problems at the age of 74. Then dad placed in the exact same ICU where his own father was just two weeks earlier. I had a feeling I, was, I knew I was dying. I was doing really well just doing my medicine with heart failure. Uh, the problem is when you deal with stress and you know, all that stuff, it just compounded what was going on inside my body. We were told he needed a life-saving open heart procedure or go home and die within six months. The heart team at Integris Baptist, the only hospital in the state able to save him. Dad ultimately chose the surgery, having a heart pump called the LVAD implanted, leaving him attached to batteries 24-7. After years of adjusting to his own new normal with the LVAD, dad finally took the step of getting himself listed on the heart transplant list in early 2020. That process includes testing and approval by the transplant team. They ultimately are the ones who will get you listed. But that journey put on hold due to a global pandemic. Dad actually got COVID-19 and thankfully recovered, but his heart continued to get weaker. And in early 2021, he was back in the hospital. His only option now, a new heart. And what we recognized is that his need for transfusion and his need for constant care had reached the point where it was the best, safest, and most appropriate thing to put him in the hospital. When we did that, that was also then the reason that he was moved up the transplant list. And that's where dad waited for the next three and a half months, filling his time working remotely from his hospital bed from March 20th until July 6th. On that day, Dr. Doug walked into dad's room with the news we'd been waiting to hear. Then he said, well, we think we found you a great match. And truthfully, I don't remember anything after he told us. We remember that conversation. It was meaningful. It was, you know, I didn't want anybody else to be able to come tell him. I mean, I, I wanted to be the one to come over and share that with him. And uh, it was a, it was a great morning. We didn't want to hear it from anybody else but you. I can raise it up. The next 24 hours, a whirlwind of activities and emotions. My mom, Christy, arriving to get dad the biggest hug. Nurses who have been like family crying along with us. Tears, excitement and fear. In over 24 hours. It'll be good. Spread the heart's good. It's, it's very good. And then it was time for surgery. After over 10 hours in the operating room, he was taken up to the ICU. Mom documenting the entire process through text messages. So many things happened. So I just started sending him texts that he could read when he woke up. So every time the doctor updated us, every time something funny happened, it ended up being I don't know, probably 12 or 15 really long texts that he got to read when he woke up. Dad unconscious for a few days before finally being well enough to wake up. And just two weeks later. You ready to go home? Yes. 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 <laughs> he was ready to head home for the first time in over 100 days. He's a very tough man and it's very nice to be his son because he takes care of all of us while going through all this. Thankful to spend Thanksgiving and the holidays together as a family, but not forgetting the gift of life. I try not to dwell on things I can't control. 
I pray for that person and I pray for his family. I don't know who they are. I think, you know, if there's a chance where I can never meet them, I think it would probably hit more. We can't do this without the gift of life from people, you know, and for every family that's received an organ and to a loved one or themselves this year, there's a family that's grieving and remembering someone that's not there. Our family thankful for more time with our Captain Jack. You know, I still want to make it to my 70s. You know, I want to see you get married. I want to see you have kids. I want to see my son succeed. You know, I think every parent wants their kids to do better than they did. And that's what I want to see for the next few years. All things we want as well. Jacqueline Chapel, Oklahoma's News 4. We are so happy for Jacqueline and her family. And according to LifeShare of Oklahoma, 645 Oklahomans are waiting for a life-saving organ donation. 22 of those are waiting on a heart. LifeShare is also encouraging everyone to make the decision to become an organ donor and talk about this decision with their families and loved ones.